But you know what? I mean, since it's you, Glenn, I'm gonna divert this to you, but here's a tip that I've learned the last week. Um, when it comes to editing, it, it really helps have a, an audio technician. Yeah? So, yeah, try that. I mean, it just makes his life a whole lot of easier. So what you're saying, just get somebody else to do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Basically for everything. Yeah. I delegate you. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Should we get into it? Yeah. Why the hell not? Let's get this uh, van a rocking. Let's get this road this. on. Let's get this road on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Behind the Mistakes with me, KJ from Number One Projects, Havar from Crude But Efficient, and Glenn from Number One Crude Mistakes. How you doing, fellas? Fine. Fine. Well, I guess the words were correct, but yeah. I just thought I'd mix it up a bit. It definitely mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> I am very much confused. I don't even remember what handle you gave me, but yep, I guess oh, so, that's fine. So- so this was the week where we were switching YouTube channels and posting a video. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I got, yeah. The, I got something would for you. <laughs> be interesting and terrifying. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, okay, I need, I need some time in advance. I mean, since, since I'm obviously into cosplay now, I also need to have my uh, costume ready. But uh, I'm ready to take over one of your channels and... So why Make are you obviously balls or a drumstick? I mean, it's it's one or the other. <laughs> why are you obviously into cosplay now? What's <laughs> obvious about it? I'm not sure. I mean, <laughs> is anyone into cosplay? I mean, it's just a calling, isn't it? I mean, everything is obviously with whole war. So, oh, okay, yeah. No, it's just. Uh... <clears throat> I had a sneaking suspicion, but uh, at Scopet Festival, and I just realized there is a lot of tools and materials I haven't uh, ventured into yet. So, yeah. 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 I mean, ma- making those armors out of, out of EVA foam, is it? Like the things you sleep on or do yoga and that sort of thing. That looks really fun, actually. But, yeah, I just wish there, wish there were some kind of armor from a fantasy or sci-fi setting that I was that much in love with that I would actually make it. But so far I haven't found any. I think I could be tempted to make a proper suit of armor. Having the surname Knight, I think that would look kind of cool in the workshop. It would, but that once again, there are a lot of styles of armors, so how would you decide which one to get? Because, I mean, it would take a while to make one as well. I'd probably look through the uh, the styles of armor, KJ, and as it would be my first time, I'd probably pick the simplest. That's how I would dis- decide. <laughs> that is a very good plan. <laughs> so, uh, so a cha- chain mail loincloth, then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Glenn has Conan the Barbarian. That, I think it works. <laughs> That's some pretty... Uh, Weird imagery there. <laughs> yeah, not the not the imagery I was aiming for on a Tuesday night, but here we are. <laughs> but it was imagery that you served. Uh, moving on, who's going first this week, KJ? <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah, me. Uh, I mean, since last we spoke about <clears throat> at least both me and Hobart has uh, published videos, so that's something we could talk about, I guess. Nice, yeah, you did. Yes, my welding station finally finally got made after being in the works for like a year or something like that, <laughs> I think. Uh, so, yeah, it felt good to actually get it out, even though the video was a bit all over the place, perhaps. And Yeah, that's, that's how it goes when you... When you film without a purpose and then you try to make a purpose <laughs> after the fact. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it was a, a week and a half ago since I last saw it. And I know I liked it, but I can't remember why I liked it. So that's <laughs> all I can give you this week. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, forgettable. That was what it was. <laughs> no, it's, 
it's it's great to, to get them out at least. Um, yeah. Yeah. So have you, have you been working on anything else since in the week? Well, I have been making some progress on my next project, but mostly in the tinkering phase of trying to figure out which way to move forward. And I think I I have a pretty solid plan. I just need some more uh, materials. Uh, and and I have to decide what kind of video I should make. Uh, so maybe you have some uh, insight to that uh, or, uh, or ideas to what you would like to see. I was... I mean, is this is this the hand project? Yes, it's the hand project. Okay. And I'm I'm not doing a, a, a voiceover again uh, because that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, but I was contemplating: should I just do a, go back to my roots and do a no talking, just just film it, or should I actually say some things in the beginning, or should I talk <laughs> all the way th- through, or? It's tricky, isn't it? Should I have a plan or should I just <laughs> go for it? It's really, really tricky, that one. I, I have the same um, problems. You, you do a talky one, which takes a little bit longer to make an edit, and you get the same results of a non-talky one. Yeah. So it's really, really hard to know which way to go. But I think in the case of this particular video, KJ, the uh, robotic hand sculpture, I'd like to see you go down a Terminator route. Follow that story, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe at the end, you know, when the arm gets chopped off, you can take the story from there. <laughs> hmm, that might be hard to incorporate. <laughs> I mean, it is it is tricky, and I should know. I mean, making voiceover is really hard because yes you make the video and then you have to enjoy your own video enough that you see something funny or that makes you want to tell what you are seeing because you have to take the not the listener but the watcher uh, with along a story and that is hard work and then of course it's, it's much easier I found to just ramble along when you are working but Working usually takes longer time than you suspect, and then, of course, you're shooting yourself in the foot when you're coming into the edit and you're trying to cut it down, because if there was any coherent sense in your ramblings, (laughs) that is lost (laughs) once you start chopping it up. So, yeah, thank God for music, so you can uh, (laughs) use that to segue in and out to uh, where nothing makes sense. But I mean, you're really good at both the rambling at the camera and the voiceovers, I think. I mean, I don't know how many takes you have to do and how much fiddling to make it look good or sound good in the edit, but the end result, at least, is is really good. That's the problem, though. I mean, I I can maybe name two videos where the voiceover went really good, but when I do any kind of recording at the computer, when you see the audio and everything, you, I mean, every little mistake is painfully obvious because you're only listening to your own voice. So, yeah, I did not end that word correctly. I had too much space there. So I find doing a voiceover can take days because, all right, I didn't like the way I pronounced that word. But once you're just rambling along with your work, I mean... You can say the wrong words or you can mispronunciate something. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter as much because the focus in is in what you're doing. And of course, you're kind of tying yourself to the mask because you can't go back and re-edit that because then you would have to redo the making part. And it, it's a bit too late of that when you've completed the piece. Yeah, But I have because... actually, <laughs> a couple of times, I've been so annoyed that I have taken my camera with the same microphone setup back in the workshop to record singular words in the same uh, surroundings (laughs) and then going back and just swapping off singular (laughs) words because that was not the word I intended and that means something completely different than I thought. (laughs) But I'm starting to give more fucks. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's why the latest video I did, 
I did more or less the the voiceover sitting on the workshop floor, as in just to continue me the intro with us watching the video together. <laughs> so I more or less rambled on uh, voiceover like four times. So I'll, this will have to do, and then I had to cut and paste something together to actually fi- <laughs> <laughs> work with the video as well and trim the video down when when needed. Uh, but yeah, it was not as fun as I hoped it would be. But at least it was better than the time I tried to do a voiceover sitting by the computer because that that just sounds horrible listening back to it. Because I went into a voice like that. Something <laughs> like it has to be a little special. And uh, yeah, it was all over, all, all over the place. <laughs> Anything but natural. Have you tried just pointing the camera at what you're doing and talk, talking through it while you're actually doing the making? But not not yourself being on camera. That seems that seems quite easy to me. I don't know that it comes across as being okay on my videos though when I do do it. Yeah, it feels off in some. I I think I need to perform for someone. Right. If that's an audience or the camera. But yeah, maybe I should try that because it's been a while since I tried that. Uh, so yeah. Might yeah. might work. I just tend to point the camera at it and just speak to the <laughs> microphone, saying, "And now I'm going to do this and that, and let's see how that turns out." And then I'll do a little montage of what I was doing or something. Yeah, I don't know. not I can't. <laughs> Neither one of us has really cracked it, have we? So <laughs> no, we're not really. It, this is very much the blind leading the blind. <laughs> Perhaps off a cliff, who knows? But <laughs> at least we're enjoying the walk together. Absolutely. <laughs> so, what about about your video, the final tractor? Uh, yep. At least for now. The big drive. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the big D, but yeah, that's something completely different. Um, yeah, it, it was good to actually finish it off and. Uh, yeah, I had basically filmed everything before Scarpet Festival, and but I, I realized I'm not going to push myself to, like, get a half decent edit out, and um, I'm going to give it a few days. Um, so yeah, it's out now. Um, I'm really pleased with how it came out, um, and now I want a new action camera, of course. Um, but. I've actually wheeled it back in. I fixed the fuel tank, who rattled loose. Um, and already thinking about accessories. And as I mentioned in the video, it needs <laughs> more power because it's... Oh, it's slow. Um, I mean, in the... I need to get it up to speed to get it up the hill where I live. If I start midway in the hill, I have to walk start it, so to speak. So... Uh, yeah, it needs a bit more oomph, but I'm not sure if I want to do it. Do I just want to leave it? Because it is a slippery slope. I mean, yes, a bigger engine, you should then have better brakes. Uh, you should have a wider stance, better tires. And by the time I've done all that and put the money in those parts, I could just have bought a better ATV and solve all my problems and just slap a, a plastic 3D printed deer on the front of it and call it a day. So I'm I'm a bit on the fence. The only thing that's maybe pushing me along is that I really want that engine for something else. And of course, taking an engine out, then of course it, it needs a new engine. But um, at the moment, it, it's down to economics. So I'm going to let it rest for a bit. I'm going to have fun with it this winter without doing too much, uh, which will give me time to do some other projects that are coming up. Um, I had some um, pretty strong imagery come into my mind today, and I'm not quite sure why it popped there, but I had images of you riding up and down your your locality in a Santa outfit on your tractor, throwing candy canes to all the children in the, in the local area. Ah. <laughs> uh... I can't really think of any gathering before Christmas where you have enough kids gathered in one place because just driving around knocking on doors feels a bit <laughs> labor intensive. But 
<laughs> but getting a Santa costume on and just drive around for hilarity, that would have been... I did actually get a comment on the video like, Oh, you're glad that, uh, uh, as we say in Norway, the un uncle police uh, didn't arrive and uh, caught you in the act. But, I mean, I'm not even breaking the speed limits. And I think they're like, go home. <laughs> it's the yeah. most strongest action I would receive. But I think uh, closer to Christmas, <laughs> yeah, put on. A sun oh, fuck. Now I need to make a trailer for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. That well. that, that's one of the thoughts I have. I have like this uh, garden trolley. It's, it's, it's really crappy, but it has four wheels. And I thought if I just remove those, weld that onto the hot water tank. And since I now have my plasma cutter and proof that it actually worked, I can easily <laughs> cut an opening in it just to make, like two seats or whatever, but I can fill it up with Santa stuff. So I, I can actually pull. What's it called in English? The 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 fabric that Santa's uh, bag is made out of. Fur. No, no. <laughs> I said bag. <laughs> uh, A sack. Uh, Hessian, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we all know that sack. If I could just pull that on the outside of that uh, of that steel tank that should be enough and then yeah I could hook that up and I could just drive around that would be fun and a boom blaster just playing Christmas music <laughs> any Christmas music in particular <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, well that's a reason I really can't get sidetracked now uh, I mean I'm very glad I finished this uh, the only thing I'm going to do. I think I'm going to cut all the build videos together and just make a, a, a su super short, no, super long. What? I don't super remember cuts. what even call it. Yeah, yeah super, super cuts. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that is just to feed the algorithm because I up until I have the Christmas song project going, I, I can't really shoehorn another project in between there because I already have. Um, I have the Turgwerg's build challenge plan also in between, but it's going to be crude but deficient. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't fit anything more into November. Yeah, I was thinking about the, your tractor that, I mean, you want a bigger engine, but I don't know how much bigger an engine you can put in that thing. But then again, you have a 3D printer and scaling that the tractor up like two times that would also look rather fun <laughs> that's yeah. something you can do in the in the cold winter nights just just uh, drawing that tractor but and scaling it up and printing it in lots and lots of parts um one of the things i want to do um I don't know if you've, yeah, of course you've both seen Mad Max. And on top of the hood of his car, he has this uh, Leyland air scoop that yeah. opens up with the throttle. So I'm thinking I would like to 3D print something like that and put on the front and then, of course, link <laughs> it to the throttle wire. So when you're revving it, it actually opens up uh, because it needs more air. There is no airflow through it now. So that engine becomes ridiculously hot and it, it melted the fuel lines also because they, they touched the cylinder so I had to fix that but <laughs> I have and been that's... looking you can get a, a 150 cc <laughs> engines I mean it, it's three times the size uh, four times the horsepower roughly uh, but the main size is very much the same so I can fit that in without any major modifications but it is with shipping and everything, it is easily four or five hundred pounds, and yeah, I got other things to use those money on at yeah, the moment. Yeah. I, I normally would say buy it in, but um, in this case, I don't think I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you you just know it's going to happen <laughs> anyway at some point, but yeah, further down the line. Yeah. I'm not playing mind games with him at all, KJ. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I did ask, I made a reel where I asked people what 
should I attach to it? And of course, uh, the trailer hitch is a natural starting point. Uh, they make quite a lot of accessories to it. Um, so the question is, what should I put on it? And of course, the season we are now entering, of course, it's it makes sense to make a, a snow attachment. But then again, you don't, I mean, it doesn't have the power to push itself and me on top. And then adding something that makes it push snow, it's, I mean, it's setting up for disaster. So that sounds like radio control to me. <clears throat> yeah. Crap. How much no. can we distract over yeah. from this <laughs> current project? <laughs> yeah. I saw a little shot the other day where there was a it was a cargo plane which specifically delivered to the Antarctic, so it had um, skis on the bottom of it as opposed to wheels. Yeah. And because of that extra fr- friction, they uh, strapped four jet engines to each side to give it extra thrust. Maybe you can go down that line. Yeah. <laughs> make I, it uh, flying <laughs> <laughs> just make the trailer a jet <laughs> I I'm not sure what they're called but they are solid fuel boost rockets or something that they attach to cargo planes to make them go fast really quickly so they can take <laughs> off on short runways and it's, it's not the Ig Nobel Prize it's I think it was in the early 90s uh, on the internet someone invented a prize for people doing and usually dying the most dumbest way and I remember this one Darwin guy. Awards yeah the Darwin Awards yeah and this one guy he worked of course as an airplane technician or something or at an airbase and he got a hold of one of these and he just strapped it to the back of his pickup truck because this was in the States. And <laughs> he just went out in the desert and he let it rip. And of course, it, it's a solid fuel rocket, basically. So once you ignite them, they just burn until they're out. So, of course, uh, I think the, the journalist who wrote this article, he was a genius because the journey he, he took the reader <laughs> on was amazing <laughs> because, yeah, this was a just your bog standard pickup truck and in the first six seconds of the journey this was the quickest moving landmass ever invented and then at some point of course the this guy realized what a huge mistake he've done so he pressed the brake pedal which just burned off all the four brakes within half a second by the time (laughs) and then of course he was airborne and they they found (laughs) They found enough pieces of that truck to fill a maracas in the mountainside. <laughs> God knows how many miles down the road. So yeah. Um, so it, it, I mean, how ten- tantalizing it is. I, I'm gonna pass. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, some small rockets, maybe. Of course, uh, this is only legal on New Year's Eve in Norway, so you can't really get uh, fireworks until the last week before New Year's Eve. So yeah, maybe a New Year's tractor celebration is coming on, but that uh, <laughs> that needs looking into. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, can't go wrong with fireworks. <laughs> so um, when, I was, when I set off from Norway last week, I sat on the aeroplane next to a man he was uh, coughing and sniffing all the way back to England. And then two days later, I'd been struck down. So I had a quiet week last week. I carried on going to work, but I didn't have much energy for the workshop in the evenings. But I did go... <laughs> You're all right there, KJ, with your squeaky boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit squeakier than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but I did go hard on the scrap wood build-off at the weekend and ever since so I'm making some really good progress on that although I've had a few ups and downs with it to be honest with you it nearly went in the bin on Sunday oh nearly gave up on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's been a whole lot of um because it's scrap wood it's crap wood basically so you know you put it together and things just don't look quite right so it's just been how do I fix this and make it look decent again And then I've been mixed up in a whole world of epoxy again. So that's slowed the whole process down of uh, 
you know, filling and waiting for 24 hours and seeing which bits leaked out. And on the uh, the first epoxy pour, that was quite easy to see because all of it leaked out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a an up and down project, but it's coming on now, and hopefully it'll be finished at the weekend, which is nice mm. because you know as as makers, we've always got something else in mind to follow on from and get excited about, and I'm already getting excited about the next project, which. Uh, yeah. Hope, hopefully it'll be an instrument to think for me. Something <laughs> new. <laughs> Something new. <laughs> well, I was inspired at Scarpa Festival and we saw a few different things there and uh, yeah. it got the old uh, grey matter working again. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't nice. know whether Steve nice. will be able to play this one that I create or it'll just make weird noises, but we'll see. Is it, I mean, isn't that the challenge for you to make something that he can't play? That is still <laughs> an actual instrument? I think it's always nice if you can play them. It makes for a nice end to the video, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm, I mean, can he play a wheelbarrow with cowbells on them? <laughs> that that actually sounds right up his alley. I'm sure he could yeah. do that, no problem. <laughs> I I had a laugh editing the half pint last time because I was not sure is this sound just in my head or is it actually here so I had to like replay the first minute of the recording and yeah you could hear that faint sound in the background of the the plinkety plonkety machine and I mean sorry to any one of you who hasn't been at Scarpet Festival and but there was a musical <laughs> instrument there making a lot of percussion noises and uh, the guy running the show he was all over the place and he seemed to be everywhere there was a recording going on so uh, <laughs> yeah it's become kind of the theme song of the entire week <laughs> at one point I'm, i was absolutely convinced he was following me <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was yeah, i thought it was safe and then in the distance you'd hear that thing coming towards you <laughs> <laughs> it's like a horror film yeah yeah. It's just missing spinning knives on it, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think I think there were a couple of people there who would like to provide some knives <laughs> to that project. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought someone mentioned something about cutting a power cord at some point. <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, recordings at Scarper Festival and uh, I realized uh, after we published the last uh, episode that there the the missing piece which was there was a, a minute missing from from the recording the live recording and that i actually had that missing piece in one of my video recordings i had so i actually stitched it in and re-uploaded the the episode so if a listener want to hear that uh, missing minute uh, then they have to go and, and re-download that episode uh, and if you want a good uh, sense to see if you heard it or not, if you heard Marco uh, call out, what was it? Uh, epoxy, epoxy slab, slab along yeah. <laughs> as a suggestion <laughs> for what to do for the along, then you've heard uh, the full piece. But if you haven't heard that, then you have a whole minute missing there in the middle. <laughs> You know, I uh, the um, the audio technician they said he had some trouble with the the mixing table. So yeah, there was one to two minutes missing. He said, and I found it eventually. And then when I tried to go back uh, and do the re-edit, I, I could not find the exact place it was missing. So I just thought, well, fuck it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> it would you be didn't fun notice to see it uh, you, uh, if you hadn't heard it. Yeah, first time. That's interesting to see. Um, but yeah, um, I'm talking about instruments and Scarpet Festival, and I, uh, I also have. Well, I, I came home from Scarpet Festival and with a, with a project or or parts of a project. Um, I know you, Glenn. You came home with uh, your pocket full of the same components and. Yesterday, I ended up falling hard into AliExpress. So, when it comes to electrical components, I mean, they are cheap, but they usually don't sell you like one or two capacitors. It's basically either 10 or a box of a million. 
still costing next to nothing. So I just went overboard. So I just bought a shitload of rectifier diodes, uh, resistors, capacitors of various kinds because, all right, I need them for this project, but I also need parts like this from time to time. And many years ago, I, I it's, it's, it stings to say it, but I tossed away uh, all my father's stash uh, when we cleaned out the house because I thought I, I would never organize this and make sense of it. But So now I just ended up uh, <laughs> buying all of it new. So yeah, if anyone need any components for any circuit board, uh, just <laughs> give me a call. I'll, I'll probably have parts until my great 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 grandchildren grow up <laughs> well, i'm hoping you have a duplicate set to send to me because uh, i'm very much looking forward to having a go at this as well oh yes i have uh, yeah. not only duplicates i have the uh, spare parts <laughs> uh, enough for both of us to fuck up big time several times <laughs> <laughs> and i'll send you the uh, the pcb board that i got that you didn't get so you can have a look at that and see if it does anything for you yeah, and that got me thinking, though. Um, what we're talking about here is the one who makes the guitar pedals. It's uh, Brock FX, uh, a really nice guy. And he said he's going to supply us with uh, the schematics and picture of how it could be done because there there is no right or wrong answers here. And I really like those guitar pedals. And there is one of them I want to have. Uh, and of course, I'm I'm going to steal some design elements there to use into my own project. But of course, that made me Google the world's biggest guitar pedal. And, uh, <laughs> obviously. Course, obviously, <laughs> yeah. And there is, a, there is a Guinness World Record of like a guitar paddle board, but that is basically a board with a lot of guitar effect pedals on it. And I think that that number was 351, but they're not integrated in the same case. And I'm thinking instead of like a lot of musicians, you have maybe eight, 10 or whatnot guitar effects that you use and you have them in a suitcase. You go on stage and you open up your suitcase and they're lined up, but why don't build them into one solid metal case? So yeah, that's, that's a winter project, I think for over Christmas, uh, <laughs> So maybe I'm going to suggest collaborations because I don't build guitar paid pedals, uh, but now I know a guy who who does and actually get custom printed PCB boards. So if I can just get him interested enough to to do the hard bits <laughs> and then I can just make a case for it and ta-da, decide. <laughs> when you said the biggest gu guitar pedal, I was more thinking... Oh, an oversized one? Yeah, building one into like a rocking chair or something like that. So you just sit there and going back and forward to get the uh, to get the effects you want or something like that. Something you have to jump on with two feet, perhaps, or <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is obviously several routes to go here, but yeah, an oversized one, the size of a, a Volkswagen Beetle, where you actually have to climb on top <laughs> of it and just jump on the switches. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, but then again, it was the, the tiny workshop issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, you can save that project for your bigger workshop. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, today I was about to write uh, our friend uh, John a message about some bagpipes because I've also <laughs> been looking at that. And weirdly enough, as I mentioned earlier, bagpipes are not a very big hit on uh, any Chinese. Uh, website so it seems like it's a narrow niche for a certain part of the world so you need to get an insider there well actually you say john but we also we have had another scottish guy join the whatsapp group today yeah we do yeah so we've got gabby from the loft workshop uh join us so uh, maybe you could hit him up as a as a second option as well yeah, or I can yeah. I can make them fight for it. I can uh, like a little friendly competition there. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck uh, with that. <laughs> a, a Scott off? No. Uh, no, 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 no. Let, let's let's not go there. <laughs> that might be the worst idea so far. Yeah. I think the I think the Norwegians has wreaked enough uh, havoc over there. If I'm not going to stir up, so yeah. Well, move along. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've not done the. Uh the bursary uh, 
Oh, God, what's the word? We've had a guy from Scotland join, so we need to go, Scotland! <laughs> Scotland! <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> so tell me about this Scotland of yours that I know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to watch The Highlander again so bad. I mean, that, oh, that's yeah, on my that's bucket list. One. Don't watch it. You'll just be disappointed. <laughs> Don't yeah. watch the second one or the third one. Then you'll be disappointed. Yeah. Um, I, I, I see. At some point, I had all the DVDs <laughs> and the extended <laughs> cuts and the rewrites and whatever. And I mean, the extended cut and the rewrites or whatever. I mean, it did not help. So yeah, you should stick to the first one. They, you know, they really grasped at straws <laughs> on the last one, and yeah, coming from the first one, that says a lot. Yeah, some things should just be a singular entity and not have. Have a universe. I mean, most things shouldn't have an extended universe around it. I feel. Uh. So, just a little change of subject. KJ, we're in November. We're in Movember. That's it. <laughs> Tell us all about it. <laughs> yes, because uh, uh, I'm part of the team Shark Attack. Kevin Shark is Movember team. So we've been we've been saving our beards for the last two months uh, which have been great not having to shave but now it's <laughs> getting a bit long but and we've done the first uh, uh, first first style so far so I got to say hello to my chin again for the first time in a year <laughs> <laughs> and my family is not happy about it but I mean it's a conversation <laughs> I've not seen my chin for about eight years, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. I can't recommend it, really. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I mean, November, for uh, anyone who doesn't know, is to raise awareness for uh, men's mental health and uh, just checking yourself out to see, uh, because cancer is uh, an evil thing that's easy to, to miss. Uh, so yeah, last year I actually did, uh, uh, I checked uh, some pigment, what's it called? Yeah, uh, stuff looking weird on my skin, but it was it was nothing. But this year I, I went a bit further and actually uh, checked uh, uh, the kitchen entrance, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> but there was no problem there uh, as well. Uh, either, I mean. Uh, so, How are you yeah. going to top that next year? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what to probe next? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm I'm open for suggestions. I almost said, but I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, but yeah, uh, everyone should uh, actually, if they feel that something might be wrong, they should check it out because it's not it's not that bad, and it's really nice to have a professional look at it uh, to see that it's not uh, not something to worry about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, and for anyone out there who is concerned, I mean, most of these things, there are actually people who do it for enjoyment out there. So it, it's not as bad as you <laughs> would like to think. And, uh, of course, cancer is that one thing. It's, it's a lot of stigma around it, but today they can actually treat very much of them if you catch them early enough. Uh, and yeah, of that's the thing. And... And, and women as well, but men are definitely in their own league of like walk it off or let's not check. It's probably nothing. And then it's very easy to move into that threshold where it's basically too late to do anything. And yeah. So yeah, and go, nowadays... go, go, go and get poked. I mean, it's the worst thing it can happen. It uh, can save your life. <laughs> <laughs> yes i feel i also need to be, make some chow, shout outs uh, uh from people who have donated because i mean it's a fundraiser as well uh the donation link will be in the in the description of the podcast so the the maker donator so far is uh, manga sisleren and uh, number one projects Yay! so thank you very much <laughs> that was a tricky one this year because kev's become a friend over the past year, I had to donate to him as well. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to get expensive for you. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't want to know anybody else in this team properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to mention that you do. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's a nice segue, though, because how did you end up on this team? Well, it was... I don't remember exactly how Kev said it, but it was a couple of years ago, and he just mentioned that there was a team then that... Pe- that uh, he was open for people to join in, and I said that yeah, that so that could be fun, perhaps. And then he said, yeah, you should, you should do it. And then I just, for some reason, said okay. And now I'm stuck. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I think this is my fourth year, perhaps. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So you. You've gone past a point now. You're not allowed to leave. Is that what you think? It feels like it. Uh, <laughs> at least it, feel, it would feel rude to leave, uh, but yeah, it's it's fun. But as I said, the the family is not really as supportive. Uh, I mean, my youngest said, "You look like a stupid Disney villain." <laughs> <laughs> That's better than just looking stupid, though, KJ. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so I. Didn't think of it that way, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could go that route, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I have to confess because I've I've sort of forgot about November until, of course, obviously through you stumbled into the the shark attacks uh, in November challenge, is it? Um, and it has kind of faded out of the media as a thing. I, I remember when it was at its peak, and of course I got carried away. So yeah, I wanted to join. Uh, but then I realized, all right, y- yeah, you have to shave at first November, and then you have to grow a mustache. And I haven't shaved for 20 years, so I'm on a streak I can't really break. I have been playing with the thought of like making a gift certificate for my daughter's 18th or combined birthday or something that, all right, you can actually cash this one in and make me shave my entire beard. But until that, <laughs> I'm keeping it. So, But then I saw the the shark attack movement. And like, I mean, it's not about shaving everything off. So like, I'm, I've been thinking, is there a way to like bend the rules and still, because I can still do a lot to it and still not be clean shaven at any point so yeah I mean you could probably do some fancy styling I mean you have a 3D printer now you can make some ornaments or something like that <laughs> and some LEDs perhaps or yeah LEDs Just make would it, be uh, the next yeah. make it shine draw, draw some ice I did actually a few years ago from, <laughs> from a close friend get these uh these bearded Christmas uh, ornaments that you could put on. So, yeah, I have a set of those. So L- LEDs <laughs> would be the next natural step. Uh, I think Kev said the other the other day, actually, it's not all about, you know, joining in. If you don't want to join in, then just show you support in any way you can, either financially or doing the sponsored walk or just spreading the word and sharing his reels. So that is a, another way you can support his cause, support the cause, our cause, really. It's for men, isn't it? So, Yeah. 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 No, I, I, maybe this is for the half pint, but then there is a question is, what defines a mustache? Is it that it is on your face, or is it other properties that opens up for you having a mustache somewhere else that you can shave <laughs> because there are other areas of the body you can shave obviously so yeah <laughs> I'm is, not going to say it I'm not going <laughs> to is that a nose or is it <laughs> <laughs> that's an oddly shaped over lip <laughs> I mean, if you want to uh, keep, keep it uh, uh, PG, that I mean, you could. If you have a lot of back hair, perhaps you could just shave a mustache into that. Have a mustache between your shoulder blades. That could be nice, perhaps. Yeah, it's a good idea. Or one of your chest hair, or on your leg, or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not blessed with uh, bodily hairs. Uh, 
<laughs> in that sense. So I can't do it. It's been a real game to no KJ episode. Hasn't yes, it? yes. <laughs> <sighs> I'm a sharer, you know. <laughs> oh, and, and, and speaking of uh, of shout outs, uh, I feel like uh, we should officially uh, on the podcast thank uh, Manga Sisler uh, for the lovely coasters he made for us of the podcast. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes, thank Those you. I think we've all uh, showed it on, on social media, but we should mention it here as well. That we, we really like gifts. And if you give us <laughs> gifts, we will talk about it. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, Christmas is coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really Was sorry. that too obvious? <laughs> <laughs> no, you carry on the good work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was speaking for us all. <laughs> Now, I, I feel really bad because I haven't shown them yet uh, in any reel um, because I have a vision of them matching the table that I'm building, but I, I need to buy some uh, hydro something something acid to make the the legs for the table rust real fast. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's coming, Arna. It's it just... Uh, Shit gets in the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is a plan. I can remember when I was a kid, I had a chemistry set, and in that chemistry set was some iron filings, and I was mixing some stuff up one day with some iron filings, and I tipped that in the sink, and within two days, the bottom of the sink had rusted out, so maybe you could go down that route. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. I don't think chemistry sets nowadays have that, uh, yeah, level of chemicals <laughs> oh hydrogen peroxide i think it was and vinegar and water that will really make metal rust um so maybe it was that and that they sell at the uh the drugstore basically uh, and yeah, i say drugstore well. because i can't say apocalypse apothecary yes yeah, the other one <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah that's the one <laughs> Uh, I had a chemistry set as well. I, I remember vividly. It was a huge box with a lot of tubes and accessories and a, a, a Bunsen burner and whatnot. And I was... I don't remember what I have seen at that point. I'm not sure if MacGyver was on television yet, but I already had visions of what I was going to do. And... My father just instantly cut me down. This is sold for children. There is nothing here you can mix that go bang. And I instantly lost the interest. Like, oh, <laughs> if you mix that one, you get green. I mean, we, we got dishwater soap already. It's green, so that's not interesting. And yeah, <laughs> if you mix this one and it turns blue, <laughs> whoop de doo <laughs> So, yeah, it, it was a bit underwhelming, I remember. Or maybe I had too high expectations, as I usually do. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Did you get... Sorry. So that was just going to say. Did you ever get the microscope as a kid? No. Was... No. Oh, I had a microscope. I, I think I had a couple, and uh, it was the most interesting thing in the world for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I think I took mine apart and got the light out of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you quickly run out of things to look at. And, uh, yeah. I mean, there are probably some things I can think of now that I wouldn't think of at 13. But still, I mean, in an afternoon, I would probably be tired. I did. I, I have spent my quite... I mean doesn't take much to be above average because this is a very much a niche but yeah i've been i've been looking at salmon sperm in a microscope to determine fertility uh as a part of one of my previous jobs so Perfect. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah that being said i i don't know what these fertility clinics take but i, I could probably <laughs> do a decent hack at it if if someone has a microscope you can come and have a look and yeah not much movement here i'm sorry 
But then again, uh... <laughs> I didn't expect <laughs> to hear about that tonight. <laughs> well, a lot you didn't uh, expect of this episode. Yeah, this is this is the episode of vivid imagery. Um, so let's let's <laughs> double back. Uh, let's go from Black November to Black November or Black Friday or Black third quarter or whatever i, I feel it yeah. expanding every year and now i realized uh, I, I saw something here the other day and oh shit we're here and i really hate it and one thing is the the commercialization of it all but it's also i have basically spent all my money uh that i have uh today uh, i also changed, <laughs> changed the oil on my car today and paid for parts and spent way too much time swearing underneath the car in a wet uh, driveway so yeah I, i've used my uh, free allowance this month and you can bet your ass that uh, sometime tonight there's gonna pop an email from uh, one of the tool uh, suppliers that i use like we now have a Black Friday 40% off on that magnificent blue tool that you always wanted, but to be fair, don't really need, but still. So yeah, just waiting for that wet slap across the face. What about if it's 40% off the lathe that you had your eye on for the longest time? Uh, you over that I do have a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> And the children's savings account, and uh, you know. <laughs> this is an investment for their future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can get my YouTube account when they get old, you know. <laughs> uh, still, still on just over four thousand subscribers. <laughs> uh, that's going to be my thing, Mister Four K. That's a good number. Hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Um, well, I would really think hard about that lathe because I was cleaning up in my workshop last night and I also, yeah, I just need to move that one and I can actually get a lathe in there and actually have working space for it. But yeah, that would be, that would be using a, a few months of uh, future money. So I mean, yeah, I could probably pull it off, but then I would not be having any fun in the buying stuff department before well into the spring. <laughs> What's on the want list at the moment, guys? I had to think about this the other day, and mm. there's a lot on mine. I mean, it, it, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, and it, it is in line with what we just discussed. There, There is a guy. Uh, outside Bergen is actually selling a CO2 laser because he's moving. It's a huge one. Mm -hmm. And it like, he lowered the price and he lowered the price and it like, it needs to go this week and it really dropped the price. And I've been Googling it. It's, it's a brand I've heard about before and it, it's decent and it looks okay. And like, no, I don't have the money. And then it's a six hour drive <coughs> one way. And yeah, crap. So no, it's not happening. But uh, I have found a loophole because it is christmas soon and of course people start to ask what do you want for christmas and my wife gets annoyed because i instantly buy whatever i need or want so i can't say that i want this one and then wait two months until christmas for her to buy it because in two days i've found it on sale somewhere and i bought it and then she has to start on scratch again but this time I think a set of chisels. I found a decent set that I want, and all right, I, I don't need it right now. So yeah, you can have this one as the gift. So uh, which yeah. ones do you want? Which chisels would you like? All of them, but yeah, <laughs> I think this is this is a it's a, a six piece of straight chisels. I think uh, of decent quality, wooden handle, so they they also look yeah. the part. But yeah, nothing fancy. I'm going to use them to chip concrete spillage on my floor. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, they're not going to have the best of lives. So, yeah. Yeah. I've got a set of uh, Narex chisels, which I know quite a few other makers have. And they're, they're really, really nice chisels, actually. But they do need just a little bit of sharpening when they arrive, just to make them proper sharp. 
to be fair, I think all of them do. I mean, yeah. every manufacturer, even the decent one, I mean, they, they come brilliantly sharp, but they say they, they need the final touch before you start using them. Yeah. Mm. Would that be something you'd be prepared to do? Yeah, I mean, I didn't tell my <laughs> wife that, but this is, of course, the excuse I need to get the Tormek. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just making her giving me the gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could ask her for the Tormek and you buy the chisels. <laughs> that would be the best way around, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure if... Because if you tell her the sharpener for the chisels, you do, you need the sharpening tool for the chisels. It sounds like it's going to be the cheaper out of the two, doesn't it? Yeah. To a but, non-maker. But then again, she is a... Uh... She really uh, nerd out when it comes to knives in the kitchen. So for the Tormex part, I could just, I mean... We need a better sharpener. I, I just say <laughs> we, <laughs> and then yeah. Yeah, they make a kitchen version as well. I think that looks decent enough to put on a on a kitchen counter for professional kitchens and that sort of thing. Yeah, but then again, I mean the the Tormek, the black one. I mean, it's more expensive just because it's black. But I would have that in my kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> would match the KitchenAid. <laughs> the wife's, not mine, but yeah. <laughs> So how about you? Any uh, thing on the the maker wish list for Christmas? I mean, I still have. I would like to have a, a turbo plane because that looks like fun to play with, but it's not something I I need. But I really should get a planer thickener or something to to make boards uh, smaller and yeah. flatter. But I don't have a actual use for it, so I need to think up a project. I think for the them. thing, the thing with the planar thicknesser is it opens up so much more usable timber in your workshop. Yeah, it really does make it a lot better. So I think I could, know. maybe not within a year, but. Within a couple, I, th I think I could save where I can earn those money back just by getting lumber or uh, dismantling something else. And instead of sanding uh, parts of old furniture, you just drive them through the thickness a couple of times and then you have proper lumber. So, yeah, not having to buy lumber, that's... Uh... Well, which one are you thinking? Have you looked at any brand? I mean, for for the small table ones, I see Devault is very much uh, the rage, but I see that uh, Metabo actually are yeah. beating them in some tests. But they're, so. they're just straight thicknesses, aren't they? That's So you would need a, a separate planer, wouldn't you, as well? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. In the small, yeah. In the small workshop, I've got a combined one, a planer thicknesser, which converts... No, I haven't looked that close because I mean it's you have to decide on on so much things. So I more or less, I'm hoping that uh, I will see a, a a used one that's such a good deal that I can't that I can't <laughs> say no to it, and then it's decided because it's <laughs> that one. Uh, so yeah, nice. but I don't have anything other on the on the want wish list that it's a. Uh, I mean, I all a TIG welder would be nice as well, but yeah, there's a lot of things that would be nice. I'll just add that to my list as well. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Glenn? Uh, just off the top of my head, I'd like a new set of turning tools, a 3D printer, a bench sander, a trim router, and a new welder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a proper list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's not not without giving it too much thought. <laughs> yeah. Now, at the moment, I want time in the workshop. I feel more than things for the workshop. Yeah, I've had uh, plenty of time over the past week. To be fair, I, I think I had most of that Lucky weekend. Lucky you. I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You make your own luck, KJ, in this world. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. definitely. Oh dear. Is it about time to uh, 
head over to the half pike. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Yeah. All right. Then. Let's sign off for this evening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. See you later. Welcome to the five minutes where we're talking about Glenn whilst he's on the pisser. <laughs> well, at least that's where we think he's going. Nobody on... actually ever knows. On the pisser, is that what, how you say it? <laughs> I'm not sure, but what, when, now that you're saying it, I, I, I'm not sure. Okay, it sounds might... off in some way, but I can't really put my finger on it. <laughs> yeah. And we can ask him when he's back. <laughs> I mean, for, it sounds a bit like he has to go go away to get a drink or something like that as well, because he needs to get pissed to to stand talking with us. Yeah, but but maybe, knows. maybe. And to to be fair, I'm not drinking tea right now, so <laughs> understandably, Mister Gin and Tonic. <laughs> Yeah, I have a huge bottle, you know. I mean, uh, I haven't seen a liter bottle of gin <laughs> since ever. That's I a... mean, ever since you mentioned that you used your thermos cup for gin and tonic at times, every time I see it in a video of yours, I think that yeah, he's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's it might not be the case every time but now it is because I this cup it's it's too large to fit the cup holder of my car so I got the Mm. smaller version and that is now my I mean from the minute I get up uh, until I get home from work I that cup is glued to my hand so that's the coffee cup so the other one is now the the gin and tonic cup (laughs) sometimes it's white wine but yeah, but now now I have gin, so and free gin. That's the best kind. Mm-hmm.